uma meta, né? Okay, I'm Anthony, and Ellie's set, setting over here. Let's see, there she is. Okay, so I'm going to tell you what happens. What happens to you when you move to the Philippines, like me? <laughs> One of the first things that happens is that you you let your hair grow long. <laughs> you stop going to the barber. So I don't know. My hair might get to be I don't know how long. Maybe down to here. You know, I still shave, but I still I have a goatee. But maybe I'll let my beard grow too. Oh, and you know, and you stop wearing shirts. There's no, there's no reason to wear a shirt here. <laughs> so one of the common expressions I get from Ellie all the time, if I ask her a question, <laughs> she does. She usually doesn't answer me at all. Or, I mean, she'll answer, but it's a non-answer. Usually she said, if it's a yes or no question, she'll usually say, oh, maybe yes, maybe no. <laughs> I'd say that's the most uh, common uh, response to a question. And then never ask a negative question. Don't, don't say, uh, you don't want to go to the store, do you? Because they'll, they'll always say yes or no then. <laughs> Instead of maybe yes or no, and then, then what's that mean? Oh, you don't want to go to the store. I mean, you say yes. Oh, yes, you don't want to, or yes, you do want to. So that's the other thing about being in the Philippines. You're always confused. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know what's going on for sure. Oh, just random things. Um, one of the cool things is that you go to a gas station and they have attendants. They pump your gas for you. I think they I think they expect a tip, but I'm not sure. So I've been more recently I've been given a, a few pesos, whatever I have in my pocket, just because I kind of feel guilty. Yeah, I'm tipping tipping in general. Who do you tip and who don't you tip? Uh, it's difficult the, at, at, at a restaurant to tip the waitress. Probably, well, if you're an expat, you're a foreigner, I think you're, they halfway expect you to tip something, but I, I don't think they expect tips from Filipinos, but I'm not sure. But certainly tipping 15 or 20 percent, that's a lot. Another cool thing is that all the girls in the, in the uh, marketplaces look like stewardesses. <laughs> you, the, the, the larger uh, grocery store here is, uh, what's it called, Lee, Lee's, Corn, Lee's, what, what's it called, Lee's Market, or Hyper Mart, and all the girls there, they all, they all have their hair pulled back up in a bun, they're all wearing nice, neat, white blouses and, and skirts, they're also all very kind of serious. Oh, another cool thing is that um, they give deference to <laughs> the older folks. So, you know, I could technically just walk in front of the line and no one would get mad at me because I'm an older folk. <laughs> and I can't forget the chickens. Chickens are everywhere. Anywhere you go, there's going to be chickens running around. And it seems like most of them are roosters. <laughs> so they're loud chickens and and then the dogs all the dogs here are s usually very skinny little whippet like dogs or or these <laughs> these dogs that have been breeding outside of their breed you know you can see this dog that looks like a um a lab but it's got little short short little stubby legs <laughs> like a dachshund or something of course, one of the things you have to get used to is the uh, deriving here. I made a video about that, but uh, the more I drive, uh, the more little things I recognize. You know, if someone's going to make a left-hand turn, they're liable to use their left arm to stick out and wiggle their fingers, indicating that they're going to turn left pretty soon here. 
and a lot of times they start to make the left turn and then they stick their arm out. <laughs> and uh, but the thing is, they turn right or they or they're in the right hand side of the lane before they make that left. So if you're going to pass them before they get to the intersection, don't pass them on the left. You know, pass them on the right. And then you know if they have a right hand turn, they can't. You know their hands on the throttle, so they're not going to stick their right hand out. They might they might give you a turn signal. Uh, but the thing about the turn signals is, ha half the people driving down the road have a turn signal on, either a left or a right, and they have no intention of turning at all. It's just that they forgot to turn it off last time they did turn. <laughs> and, but you know I'm guilty of the same thing, so I can't complain about that. Oh, and I was just amazed. You know to see. Two people on a scooter is, you know, very common. Three people on a scooter, that's common. Four people on a scooter, that's pretty common too. And then five people on a scooter, I didn't think that was possible. Uh, nope. You could probably get five people on a scooter and a bag of rice too. <laughs> I know from my own experience now, I'm, um, we're taking things back from the grocery store. I never figured we could carry on that scooter. but. Uh, it's amazing what you can actually carry, how much. Between the U-box on your scooter and then what you can put between your legs and then what your passenger can hold on to, it's a lot. So, you know, we can get a whole week's worth of groceries um, hauled home on the scooter. No problem. Like most things here, no problem. Oh, back to the uh, scooters. You know, half the people wear uh, helmets. The other half don't. Uh, so I, I, I think there's a helmet law here, but people don't abide by it. The amazing thing is I, I at least always wear sunglasses to protect my eyes, but man, it seems like most of the guys here don't wear anything. They don't wear a helmet, don't wear any, even glasses. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say is that um, when you go out to eat, uh, the waiter, waitress, is never going to bring you the bill. You've always got to ask for it, you know. And so, the challenge is, you know, after they serve you, uh, they kind of disappear on you. So you got to keep your eye on them. And then if you catch their eye, you go, give them a signal like this, and that means I'm ready for the bill. So the other thing is, I've been here for six months, and. Um, I've spent almost all my time with Ellie and then some foreigner friends that we've made uh, with their Filipina girlfriends. And uh, But I haven't really been around a whole bunch of Filipinos at the same time until the other day when we went to a friend's birthday party. It was the, the daughter's 18th birthday. And of course, you know, the whole extended family was there and some other friends, but uh, there was only one foreigner guy there and myself. So that was the first time that I felt not really out of place because they make you feel welcome and everything, but of course, they're all speaking Filipino, whatever, Cebuano or Tagalog or something. And of course, I can't understand except a couple words every now and then and um, so it's the first time I, I felt I really felt out of place like gee I, you know I'm, I really am a foreigner in a foreign land oh one of the nuisances here is burning for whatever reason people just love to clean up around the, their house around the roads which is, you know, admirable that they, they are, are clean. Uh, Ellie tells me that the barangay captain um, will pay the, the, the local people living to, to keep their, the street in front of their house cleaned up, the, the grass trimmed and the weeds and so on. But they rake it up into a, um, a pile and then they set it on fire. But, you know, everything's so moist here that it doesn't burn well, it just smolders, it just smolders. So you got these piles of smoldering grass and weeds and sticks and stuff. And uh, it just, you know, you, 
you're riding your scooter along, you're going to go through this, this big fog bank of smoke. Well, your next door neighbor is burning a pile in their yard and the wind's just blowing it right through through your yard. That's the way it is. I mean, next to the, uh, the chickens and then the karaoke uh, and then the smoke, <laughs> you got to get used to it. The typhoon awareness. I think most Filipinos are very acutely aware of coming typhoons, uh, and rightfully so, because you know, they do a lot of damage. And so whenever they hear that there's a low pressure system coming in, you know, they're concerned about the typhoon coming in. Dealing with the bureaucracy here, you know, all the agencies, uh, the Land Transportation Office, the Bureau of Immigration, etc. Um, <laughs> they're just so inefficient in the way they do things, but that's just the way it is. Have to get used to that. Uh, you know, if you can get something done in one trip, you're really lucky. Uh, for instance, I, I bought a scooter, and of course you need to register it, and the dealership, you know, did all the paperwork for that, but then you're supposed to get a license plate. Well, that was, it's been five months now? It's been five months. No license plate yet. I went to the LTO, the Land Transportation Office, and to get my driver's license, and it wasn't such a big deal to do it. They ran me around a couple of places, like to get my medical, right? Sent me over to the building next door to do my medical stuff, but they didn't do anything. They didn't, you know, make me read a, a chart of letters or take my blood pressure or anything like that. I just paid them and filled out a form and then went back to the other office I just came from. But anyways, I, I was given the receipt that I filed everything, and then I was supposed to come back to get the uh, actual laminated printed driver's license. Well, again, it's been five months. Well, they're pr it's because their uh, license printing machine is broken, supposedly, and they, they keep telling me, just go online and see if it's fixed yet. So, so once a month or so I check online and I never find anything online about the printer being broken or when it's going to be fixed. So I, I just hope the receipts will, will do the job if I get pulled over. <laughs> no problem. So the longer I've been here, uh, the more use I get to things and the more normal everything seems. So. <laughs> I'm quite relaxed and, and contented with everything. I don't know why. <laughs> if I think about it, I could get really irritated about some things, but for some reason, it doesn't bother me. Because it's so darn hot and humid here, <laughs> I don't have the energy for it. <laughs> okay, I have to keep notes about uh, new things that I recognize because uh, otherwise everything just seems normal. See you next time with some new things.